Yo, what up? You have to. You, you, I got. I can't. How many times do I gotta say I've got one rule? <laughs> Some milk. I don't want milk now. <laughs> Coming back into that, you guys would have all recovered. You all got all your hit points back. You got half of your HD back, so you all should have one. There's not much to be said. You guys head down another one of those hallways. It continues on for at least another hundred feet or so. As you move, as had been happening before, the lights in the area seem to flicker on and off, uh, with emergency lighting seemingly following Gino specifically as he moves, as if it's trying to illuminate the area that he's heading into. You get the sense if one of you were to fall behind, you'd just be left in the metallic, empty darkness of this place. Should we, like, tell the pillar dude that we found one? Or should we just keep wandering around? I'm pretty sure his, uh, what he would say is good to find the others. Probably. Probably. We're just saving him a, you know, a call. As you anyway. go here. <laughs> We've arrived at whatever this is. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> it just turns, there's a dragon. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Uh, you, as you guys, you know, as you guys continue right. down the hallway, you see a <laughs> flickering light in the darkness ahead of you, stretching about a hundred feet out or so ahead of you. Uh, the hallway seems to come to a dead end, and just shining with a very faint, uh, pale, emerald light, uh, you see a circular medallion matching the one that you saw before, just seemingly hovering, placed into part of the wall. Taking another step forward, it seems to detect the people have come around it, and you see the area lights up a bit as these bits of the wall peel away, and for that, like, hundred or so feet between you and the end of the hallway, what almost looked like the end of jet engines, but much larger and made of a uh, more arcane sort of material, emerge from the walls every five or six feet and, and cause the entire walls heading towards you to just be a series of large turbine-like vents. You notice that every 15 feet or so, the pattern on the floor changes, the grating is different, or it goes from being grating to being the same kind of floor you're used to, to being 15 feet of grating uh, covering the floor. And you hear the faint sound of almost what sounds like a dozen gasoline-powered stoves flickering on at once, as if you heard you hear the sound of pilot lights coming to life. <clears throat> at the end of the hallway, you see that there's what looks like a large engine built into the wall, and the metallic medallion is set into it. The entire area is now illuminated by this energy coming through it going down the hallway, and you are free to act as you would. As you guys are looking right. towards it, you hear the sound of gasoline moving through pipes, you can smell the oil-like scent of the fumes from them filling the air, and then you see that a bit down the hallway, one section about 15 feet gets engulfed in flames that suddenly rockets forward, and they stay present for about eight, nine seconds, just white-hot flames arcing across from one side of the hallway to the other, and then they go out. Great. Can I Close. wait another, like, half a minute to see if the one fucking torches up again? This time, the one that is closest to you. So we're going to say you guys would be probably about 10 feet off the map to the left. The one that is closest to you guys, that whole section, that one mm. ignites next. If you continue to wait, oh. the pattern that they're igniting in, once again, it would be that one would follow. Following that, that one, it follows again, igniting. It, it goes off it seems and a bit about 30 seconds. It does seem to be largely random. I'd like all of you to make perception checks. Uh, Nicola Arden and Fionula. You guys would take note of the fact that though it seems random, there is always about three seconds or so of the sound of um, the engines igniting before the flames actually erupt forward. So if somebody was being astute, paying attention, they would be able to hear the fire before the fire actually came out. I will say, I could make my way forward. I have good ears. I... But you don't have good hips. <laughs> it's true, your hips could use some work. Yeah, the only problem sending you in, uh, Marile, is that you don't listen. You could tell me what to do and I can try. From that far away? Mm-hmm. You think that you can make your way in there, and you can listen and not get barbecued at any... No grace in me? Look, I was trying to make the, I was trying to make the thumbnail right. Anyway. <laughs> well, even I understood what he meant. You know, it sounds like you don't really have faith in your best friend there. Look, it's... It's not that I don't have faith, it's... It's that you don't want to see me get hurt because you worry about me. No, right? I want to get out of here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, pretty fucked up. Oh, fuck. Well, it might literally be a shot in the dark, but um, 
What if we try to shoot the teeny metal bits so then we don't have to like pry them off and get all strong? Which I could probably do, all things considered. But what if we tried to like shoot it or stab it really carefully and sort of pry it out of there without try instead of using like our bare hands? Oh, we need someone to pry things. I can do, do you that. Have, do you Are have you... the other medallion? Do you have the other medallion on you? I think so. Do you mind if I see it? Um, sure. Does it look like it is sturdy, like it would survive getting shot at? <laughs> Uh, it looks like it's made of a very heavy metal. Whenever you hold it, it definitely weighs a lot more than you'd expect it to. And once again, these medallions are about, like, palm-sized. Like, you couldn't close your hand entirely around it. It looks like it could probably withstand being shot by normal bullets or what have you. It might be something that would break if too much force was applied to it. Fucking, I was metal. mostly just wanting to know if it would survive any sort of attempt to shoot it or rig it out like that. Uh... It was just an own. idea. You and, and Nicol, uh, Nicolo are are, uh, are the best suited for this kind of thing. Yonula, you are you are a lot stronger than I. I believe that having someone who could definitely do that better than I could would be best. Sure. I feel like this is like the 2005 horror mystery Star <laughs> 2 starring Tobin Bell. There's like an oven and a guy has to go in and the- Yes, Emmanuel, like, I don't- I'll stab you unless you go in there and he's like, well, I'm going in there anyway, so shut up. And then he burned alive. Yes, Emmanuel, well, I, 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 I can I can see, I can under- I have never seen the movie, but I know the I know of the movie. I can picture it. I don't- <laughs> I'm not helping I'm right now. I'm, 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 I don't want- no. And we're working into fire. So yeah, it's exactly like that, Manny. Like that. It's exactly like that. It was a lot smaller for him, though. He had to crawl. We have a lot of running room, so it should be okay. This is comforting. All right, Fionnula, do you understand the plan? I do. All right, I, so I, I think... So we hip hip hop and listen for it. And when we get to the end, you want me to use all of my big muscles and pull it out of there, yeah? I will try to aid you as much as I can. I will mostly be going with you so that I can make sure to hear any gaseous noises or head forward if you have to head back. Okie dokie. Okay, so that said, as you guys proceed in, as you get into your, like, runner's positions, do a couple stretches to prepare, and then listen for the sound, I would like you guys to both roll me perception checks. Oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> uh... It's fine. We're not gonna... It's fine. It's fine. Theo, my love. So, as you guys go to listen for it, you hear the sound but you can't tell exactly where it's coming from. So very much the way this would have been is you guys waited, that one flames erupted from it, and as soon as it stopped, you rocketed forwards listening for it. But your own footfalls echo through the area in such a way that it sort of makes it hard to tell which area of the hallway the sound is coming from, and moving forward, you have no idea where it's going to be this first time. And full disclosure, I don't know where it's going to be this time. We'll find uh -huh. out after you guys decide where you want to move. As you guys rock it forward, you don't hear it. As you move forward, you see the flames begin to erupt. And Niccolo, you're, you're like our mid-jump. You land, turn to the side as both of you look past each other to the turbines on the other side and you see flames <laughs> erupt out. I have complete faith in you. <laughs> oh, well, no, they're dead! Vionula. You fail. Niccolo, you succeed. You duck down, Niccolo. You hit the ground as the fire gouts over you. Fionnula, you, take, you take four damage. In that case, you both hear that the next one is going to erupt right from where you are. As soon as it goes out, oh, you, 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 you like feel the gas begin to come out of the turbines that are on the side of you, almost, almost moving your hair a little bit. The oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. <laughs> smell of gasoline. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. <laughs> so, <laughs> where would you like to move to? If it's coming out from right there, I think just going as far as we can. <laughs> yeah. As you do, they rush forward. You guys see them stand up. Fiona is a little bit crispy from the last gout of fire that came out. They like shake it off, and then they immediately get, just have a moment of. <sighs> Uh-oh, and then start moving forward. They rush as more fire erupts from that area. You guys get near the end. You can see the, um, you can see the, uh, emerald-colored medallion sitting inside the machine at this point, and you can hear this whirring sound coming from the engine at the end of the hallway. I'd like you guys to roll another perception check. Ha! Nice! He can see the code. I hear the code. <laughs> as this one goes off, Fionula, you... Don't know where it's coming from. So, Niccolo, mm -hmm. alarmingly, as you listen to it, you hear it coming from what seems to be in front of you, and you, like, skid to a stop, and for a second you think that you've outsmarted it, and then you hear the same eruption of gas beside you, behind you, 
farther down the hallway, as in this particular oh. instance, all of them seem to be lighting oh. up. I'm just gonna turn to Fionula. Let's just grab the thing! <laughs> <laughs> you have an unavoidable moment of knowing that there's nothing to be done about this particular instance. You both <laughs> throw yourselves against the wall as fire blasts in front of you. <laughs> Nicolo, one I strand of your hair flows slightly ahead of you and gets burned in front of your eyes. I know your beautiful hair. That was my favorite strand. Okay, my only idea is to try to pry it out of there. So, um, I'm gonna try to fit the blade of my katana in there and try to just sort of like use it almost like as leverage to try to like pop it out. I'll let you know if we have to move. Okay, thank you. All right, Nicolo, roll a perception check. Fiona, roll an attack roll. Oh, that's enough to hit it. It is a wall. Roll me damage. I'm gonna roll to see which of the things is going to ignite. <laughs> that's unfortunate. It's all of them again. Uh, you both succeed against it, so you both hear it, Nicole. You become aware that it's everywhere, and you're just like, <gasps> against the wall, and just get back as flames erupt in front of you again. Uh, Fiona, I'm just like imagining like she like goes to attack it, and it's just like, and we're here again, and I just push her in, I just I grab the wall too. <laughs> As you strike it, Fionula, you do manage to dig into it, and whenever he, like, pushes you and tries to get you against the wall, it actually forces the blade in a little bit more from him just abruptly shoving you. You do create enough of a indent in it that you could fit, like, a couple of your fingers in, and you could try to retch out the medallion if you so desired. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get my little thingies in there and just, like, try to pull it out. As you reach in, roll me an athletics check, please, Fionula, as you try to pull it out. Beep, beep. You manage to like pull it and it comes like a half an inch out, but as you yank it out, the sound of metal grating against metal can be heard as it is like vacuum sealed in here. Like it almost feels like it was built as part of this uh, indent. And you are pulling it out and it's becoming easier as you go, but it doesn't come out entirely. As you do this, the Emmanuel and the others, you guys notice that the flames that were erupting near you don't subside as quickly and you hear a mechanical whirring and you see part of the top of the ceiling opens up and two figures drop out of the ceiling into the flames in front of you about 15 feet down what appear to be mechanical soldiers standing up made of uh, their bodies made of copper and bronze as they stand they put their hands out and these spears these uh, how glaive like weapons made of just clockwork components unfold in their hands and they look down towards the end of the hallway uh so <laughs> Nicolo, you don't even notice them because of your one on your perception check. Yeah, this see is fire. fine. Marile, you would go first as you see this happening. We, we, we're gonna shoot, we're gonna shoot Iron Man 1. You hit the first one. As it strikes it in the back, it lurches forward, and then it turns back over towards you. The two soldiers regard themselves for a second, communicate seemingly instantly. One turns back towards the group as the other stays looking towards Nicolo and Fionula. Hi, uh, I'm going in. <laughs> I'm gonna swing at him, and I'm gonna put a style in it. Hiya! All right, you swing, you strike it, uh, you deal nine damage to it with that attack. It doesn't seem to resist the damage or anything. I pulled out my gun. Fuck him up. And uh, I'm gonna fucking shoot at Soldier T. Fire at it. You deal seven damage to it. That's number two. So the one fighting Gino. As Gino rushes up to it and starts exchanging blows with it, it just retches back as its shoulder plate is bent inward by a bullet striking it. I got you there, friend. You see seams on its body heating up as if its internal mechanisms are going into overdrive, as if they're overclocking themselves. Steam begins to pour out from chunks of it as its eyes begin darting around frantically. It's going to go for th uh, four incredibly oh. rapid attacks on you. Oh. Oh, hi, friend. Oh. You action surged. It's going to go ahead and do its version of action surge. <laughs> <laughs> The first one misses, <laughs> clangs off your armor. The second one hits. I'm just going to roll all of them, just up front. Mm -hmm. The third one hits, and the fourth one misses. So two of them hit you. Okay. You take seven damage, <gasps> and then you take seven damage. After it does yeah, this, it go. pulls back from you, and it seems to stop working for a second. It seems almost like short circuit, as if that was too much for it, and it begins just twitching in place, its body locking up. Uh, looking at Fionniella who is who is uh, doing that, I'm just gonna be like, well, I'm going to uh, hunt this Markham. I will nice. go for an attack on this boy. You take a strike at him ah. and it dodges out to the side, brings its blade up, and as it moves, your blade collides with the halberd, slides along it and away from it. As <laughs> that happens, I just turn to Fionniella and I'm just like, I got him, you keep going! Okie dokie! Emmanuel? Mm -hmm. Chaos Bolt. 
Ah. That's a hit. Uh, ooh, I don't know. Fire seems like a good option here. I'm gonna do force damage. Gets blasted against one of the turbines and half falls into it on the wall. Okay, I'm going to try to, like, put my foot up against the wall and try to, like, <laughs> pull this stupid thing out. <laughs> Roll me athletics. Me! Fianula! <laughs> Fianula! Oh my god! <laughs> it is sliding out so with sorry. all of the the ceremonial patience <laughs> of an Apple product box being opened. <laughs> okay, maybe you <laughs> like this thing and I would break I'm kidding. I'm just <laughs> pulling it and just screaming at the one. <laughs> Come on, Fionula! At this point, <laughs> Your feet are off the ground on the wall as you're pulling it <laughs> latched onto. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna style it. You'd be a shame to waste it now. Hiya! Oh, yeah! you get a style point back. You really nice. didn't need that style point. Go ahead. <laughs> I didn't, but I, now it, point is why it was a free that. one. Right. Hiya! And that one is you, you swing upwards as it seems to be coming to and keep, uh, coming to its senses. You cleave it in half. Uh, it is sliced and flies down the hallway. Hey, y'all. All right, you get over there. Oh. And that's you. Yep. It's turn. It's going to go ahead and use overdrive. On. Makes sense. And it's going to go all four attacks on Nicolo. Hello, oh, Gino. Goodbye, no. Gino. <laughs> <laughs> Attack number one, hit. Attack number two, miss. Attack number three, hit. Attack number four, hit. Let's so it hit go. three times. Uh, Strikes first, dealing nine damage. Second okay. attack, maximum damage. You maintain concentration, but take 12 damage. And then the last uh, hit. Oh my god, it maxed again. Nicolo's down, oh, I think. Down. Yeah, Nicolo's oh, no. knocked unconscious. Goodbye. Shit. <laughs> Nicolo is now down. You see this thing unleash a flurry of hits, and then uh, as it strikes him with the second hit, and it kind of lifts him into the air with an upward strike, it grabs him by the neck and slams him down into the ground. And Niccolo ah, stops fuck. moving. Arden. Uh, yeah, I will go there, and then I'm going to use my Crimson Rite of the Flame and set my gun on fire. Oh, how do you hurt yourself? Uh, it's like my uh, my braces are like like shark skin. You rub it one way, and it fuck it, it'll fuck you up. Uh, as you yeah. do, you guys see Arden's blood reacts. He puts some of it on the gun. He like presses some of it into the chamber, spins the chamber on the gun, so that the blood is now adjacent to the bullet that's about to be fired. And uh, his gun just catches on fire. You shoot, you deal <laughs> 11 damage as it gets hit. It uh, the bullet strikes it, and the area around where it strikes it superheats immediately. And you can see the metal bending under the heat from the bullet. Man, I see, I see. Niccolo is dead, which means it's a chance to earn another lap dance. So she just sees Niccolo down, and it's just like, oh, oh we, well, don't want that. So we are going to heal Niccolo so that he doesn't die. Niccolo, you regain seven hit points. Hey. Yeah. Fianula? Okay. <laughs> I saw there you go. I saw hey. the one for a second, and I was going to be so unhappy. <laughs> Finally, Fionula, it comes yeah. out. With a satisfying, the satisfying sound of a jar finally opening as it just thumps <laughs> out of the wall <laughs> and you tumble back, back onto the ground. I will say, because of how you were pulling, you are prone, but you can stand. Okay. Fianula okay. goes up to the medallion. It's like, all right, time to pull this out. <laughs> Fianula, that's a jar. All right, then, that is Gino. It's time to heckin' stab. hi -yo. That hits. Manuel's gonna try and see where the next explosion's gonna come from. Cool. So you just assuming that you tell them, yeah, it's gonna be all of them. <laughs> all right. Top of the round. Everybody that's down there is gonna get tired. So Fionula, you rush forward, and as you get into that space, mm. you feel the exhaust of the gas being released out from it, and turn and just have a moment of like, really? Motherfucker! <laughs> and, and, as you get to the F, fire. <laughs> Mother f <laughs> Nicolo succeeds, everyone else fails. Fionula! <laughs> Fionula, you also lose all your style points. Fionula, you also lose all your style points. You guys all take three damage. Fionula, you take one. Cool. <laughs> I'm gonna roll to see where the next one's gonna go off. Kaboom. It's lightly charred hair and clothes, like a ah! <laughs> Okay, so... I am looking like shit. I'm gonna use my action to dash to the end of the fucking hallway, cause I'm like, fuck, 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 fuck. 
Uh, yep. You will leave the soldier's attack range, so as you do that, he's going to attack you. All right, fucking bring it, bitch! As you go, the halberd comes out and swings by you. Uh, it misses. Oh, nice. <laughs> you rush by, and you get with the uh, medallion five feet off the map. I reach out for a high five as she runs past me. <laughs> yeah! Fucking get it! Nice! Yeah! Now get them the fuck out of there, y'all! Get him. Take it a swing! He's not stunned anymore. I can style point. That's a hit. Boom! All right, Gino, use a sneak attack. Do it. You strike yeah. him, you hit him, it breaks his body apart as he scatters into pieces on the ground. Sneak attack, yeah! All right, cool. Sneak Let's attack. get out. Take one step forward, and I'm on a lightning lord, Gino. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Rolling against him. Yeah. Do you choose to fail? Yes. You choose to fail, you get uh, latched onto by lightning lure, and then pulled back as the flames beside you erupt. I'll just pull him cold. Uh, Coil of lightning yanks you chest oh, first yeah. onto the ground <laughs> as you just soar through the air away from the flame. Action movie <laughs> dodge immediately eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the round, you guys are still within range, so I'm going to figure out exactly which one's going to go off. It's all of them. They all start going off. You all see this happening. You hear the sound of just a bit of machinery scratching as a pilot light is trying to flick on just a and then you just hear to get thawed. as at the end of the hallway flames erupt. The three of you that are in there look towards it, turn and run away from the explosion, dodging and jumping just in time for the flames to erupt past you and over your heads as if you you're looking at it, you're not cool if you're looking at it. <laughs> as you a dodge roll onto the ground, land, and have escaped from the danger of the turbines, now in possession of the Emerald Medallion. Hey, Emmanuel! Emmanuel! You know how I like pulled it out of the wall and like ran away all cool? Is that like any of the movies that you watch? Uh -huh. Was that like a movie person? It's like Point Break. <gasps> we should watch that. <laughs> Which point broke? But the when did that come out and who's in it? Uh, it's, it's Keanu Reeves. Oh, cool. That's a really like that cool guy. name. I'm Keanu Reeves! Wow. He, he sounds breathtaking. <laughs> So I kind of feel like shit, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. Can we sit for a few minutes out of here? Yeah, that sounds yeah. like a good idea. I'm feeling a little crispy. Usually fire doesn't yeah, fire doesn't really bother me all that much, all things considered, but I'm feeling a little toasty. That's fair. I had to poke myself in the finger. Yeah, oh. did you do like that blood thing where it like makes you even more powerful? Uh, yeah, yeah. I haven't gotten a chance to use it lately, because I'm, usu I'm usually on the brink of death. Getting stabbed in the neck, stop that. It's not a pleasant feeling, if, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I but... can't imagine it is. So, yeah. stop it, the third but thing also is you're this. a total badass. You guys head back to the Nexus, where the four pillars, three of which still have indents that would be filled with the medallions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, oh. Marile, mm -hmm. you have a really, really pretty singing voice, and I just wanted to tell you that. Oh, thank you. At first, I thought I was just naturally talented. Now I think it is because I'm a half succubus and it just comes with the job. Oh. But it's good to be both. I'm only half. Hmm. Would I be aware of what succubi are at all? Uh, why, go ahead and roll me a history check regarding the Frost Hells. Yeah. <laughs> What's a succubus? <laughs> all right. So oh. that, that's, that's, that, that's the first one. There's another check. Could you, you then roll me just a religion? Or nature, because it would be nature for you. Roll me religion or nature. This is to... The first one was about a specific individual. The second one is about... It's about succubus. Uh, yeah, cool. succubi in general. I'm going to religion, because it's slightly better. You do know about nothing. succubi. I love how slightly better is still a negative. So they are they are a breed of demon. You you know the general gist of them. Like, you would know everything that you, Hayden, would generally know about succubi, and that they... Mm -hmm. uh, succubi and incubi both um, seduce mortals and drain both their blood and life essence... Uh, through, you know, sensual contact and such, which can be anything from kissing to heckin' doing the dirty. Generally drain power from mortals to gain it themselves or offer it to those above them. Within this setting, succubi are almost always uh, subservient to a stronger demon. They usually work 
uh, underneath them. Usually there's a bit of a hierarchy with it, with demons like Succubi and that they have almost vampiric connections back to the demons that preceded them. With an 18, I'd say you'd even know that within the Frost Hells, there's rumors that you would have been vaguely aware of that the first Succubi uh, resided there. Oh. And you would know more about that if you'd succeeded the history check specifically, but you would know yeah. enough to know that the most relevant Succubi in existence would be from where you came from. Not necessarily from the Frost Hells, but resided within the Frost Hells. I make that distinction because after the wars between Sparta and Mundus, and then also the conflict between Argosax and Mundus and the various factions in Hell that remained, a lot of demons ended up in domains they shouldn't have been in because of their allegiances. This is one such case where Succubi are definitely not native to the Frost Hells, but... But they're there now! But the first mistress does reside there. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'd always heard rumors, but I guess it kind of makes us connected in some sort of way. So, there was always these rumors in the Frost Tales that the first succubi in existence lived there. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. she lived Fancy. in the Frost Tales is from what I heard. I, I don't know if it's, like, super true or not, but in a way that kind of connects us in a weird way, so cool. But you being a succubi makes so much more sense now. Okay. Mm hmm It's why my job is actually quite fitting for me. You're not like a full-on succubi, right? No, only half. I don't know where I come from. Uh, cuando nací no tenía padres. Uh, orphan. Mm. I'm sorry. I mean, I grew up fine. I only ever heard that word once before when I was watching Jennifer's Body, but they didn't let me finish watching that movie. <laughs> it's a good thing they didn't let you, Emmanuel. What's wrong with Jennifer's Body? Is it fucked up? Let's just say you see a bit more of it than you really want to. Oh. Ew. That sounds boring. Hmm. But mm -mm. it's really interesting to know just like a little bit more about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know about it more than I do. I don't know anything about where I came from. I didn't even know what I was until he tried to kill me, points at Niccolo. <laughs> and it comes back to that every time. Well, if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be together right now, Niccolo. I would probably be dead, or you would probably be dead, or we would both be living our lives casually. I would definitely be dead, as we just saw. Then I would probably be dead, too. Well, I'm glad you're both not dead. Well, you would definitely be dead, because if I didn't if I didn't let you survive, I would have killed you, so yes. Mm-hmm, exactly. <laughs> Holy crap. And here, I would have, and here I would have thought it was just a robbery going wrong. I mean, I did have a lot of nice things. I thought I had a fucked up upbringing. Well, what's your <sighs> upbringing then, Ardine? Uh, you care to share sit. with the class? I'm gonna sit down. You have an interesting enough one with what <laughs> with what we know about that man we saw. I mm. I basically well I wouldn't call them a cult. I grew up in a um well an organization of uh, weirdos. I say didn't exactly volunteer to gr uh to grow up there. Honestly, I don't remember anything before I was fourteen. One day, just my memory starts. I'm being experimented on, and part of this organization of a bunch of weirdos who couldn't make up their minds about either wanted to be like the demons or cutting them down. What are I was these people not called? allowed to experiment until college. That's true, Emmanuel. <laughs> <laughs> what were true these people worthies. called? The Order of the Sanguine Heart. Don't know if you. Nicolo, go ahead and just go ahead and roll a history check. <laughs> That wouldn't ring any bells Sanguine. for Dino, would it? Uh, actually, ah. yes. You should also roll a history or a religion check. <sighs> Jeez. Uh, how much? You wanted to read off the sheet. I might just read you <laughs> the document if if you yeah. do. You guys, do you have a you have a minute? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, I mean, I All right. Do you want me to read it? We have five. I, I can down, just because I can also rest. addendum anything as we go. Um, okay, cool. They're an order of blood hunters who held control over a small village called Leskerville in Ireland. Uh, the Order of Blood Hunters were a modern organization founded by an alchemist who studied the nature of demonic blood and the final member of a family of demon hunters, the two of them that founded it being Matthias, Julie, and Leyden Stratum, respectfully. Leyden Stratum being the man that you all encountered before. Uh, the two together, came together out of a mutual search
search for demonic power and formed a modern order of blood hunters. Their goal was to find powerful demons, capture them, and study them so that their powers could be harnessed and used by humans. After founding <laughs> their order, their initial members were the students of the alchemist Matthias, who were mostly willing test subjects. Uh, but when the addition of blood hu the blood hunter arts caused them to go mad, they expanded out to more suitable candidates, slowly inducting new members with a promise of power and purpose, only to make them test subjects while train them to fight. So initially they had students that were alchemists who they were like, here, have some demon blood. Drove them insane. So they're like, cool, let's get people like Arden and we'll do it to them because they might survive. Uh, Leyden did most of the recruiting while Matthias performed experiments in arcane studies. Uh, they seized control of the entire town of Leskerville, which they both pr they protected from demons in return for being given complete anonymity within the village. So the, the town basically protected them. It was like, there's no cult here. What are you talking about? And just, no. With that established, uh, they found ways to use artificial dem demonic powers to enhance their training. Leyden, in particular, used this to make himself more powerful had a habit of collecting demon and monster components, uh, eventually even finding and earning his own devil arm, the Caliber Hound. Several years ago, however, and this is probably why they would be known to you, especially you, Gino, it's very fitting that you'd know about them, because they would have been on your guys' radar. Tragedy struck. During a new moon, Leskerville, you guys don't know the exact details, but a gate to the demon world appeared there. It opened up, and over the course of a night, the town was wiped out. The enchantments and defenses that they had set up to warn them about demons didn't function and everybody in the town including the members of the order were effectively completely wiped out the demons fed they did whatever they came to do they raised the town and the surrounding area and then they vanished your order and others like it would have assumed that the demons organized a sneak attack as a means to get the jump on the order of the sanguine heart they would have had known generally that there was a group of humans becoming too powerful for their own good there were rumors that several people did survive during the fire but the only people who saw any of the survivors died relatively soon after without giving any proper information and the bodies that were found within the town were mangled and burnt beyond comprehension so any attempt to identify the individual members uh proved fruitless that's effectively the long and short of it. There's some smaller details, but that's everything that people outside of it would know. So, Order of Demon Hunters cannibalized demons to try to make themselves more powerful, were blood hunters founded by the end of a line of blood hunters, which included Laden, uh, Laden and an alchemist, and they got wiped out by demons suddenly. Also, there was a name for that event. The Blinking Moon Massacre of 2023 was what it was referred to as when the entire town was sudden, was taken off the map in a night. The mm -hmm. reason for that being that it was a new moon, but it shouldn't have been. The moon just vanished from the sky that night and reappeared normally the next night. Oh yeah, I know about those guys. That's, uh, yeah, that's real fucked up what happened to that town. I... You, were, you lived through that? Barely, but I did. As far as I know, me and two other hunters are the only survivors of that massacre. I don't know who they are or where they went, but Well, your buddy boy Leiden, apparently. Yeah, he, he's probably the, the one of them. I don't really know where the other one is. I'd like to find out. I didn't know that man had a order. He seemed uh, dangerous enough with him on his own. Yeah, no, they, uh, they didn't fuck around. I really didn't like that place. I had friends in there, but they're all dead, as far as I know. Hoping I find at least one of them, but I'm not going to count my lucky stars. <sighs> well, when we get the city back to normal, if you want to go search for them, I'll go with you. <laughs> I just go over and I just put a hand on his shoulder and I'm just like, me dispiace, I'm sorry. I was going to say I can pull a string or two and make the liquor bottomless for your lap dance, but... I yeah, won. what is this lap dance thing you keep talking about? And we're getting up again! <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm apparently old once. Yeah, you are! Okay, wow, we're drawing up a tab. Perhaps when the city isn't completely covered under a few hundred feet of ice, please. Yes, of mm. course. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Could be, yeah. I gotta stand oh, yeah. up and... Well... Time to push forward. Yeah, let's find this third medallion so Arden can get his lap dance. Gilligan is going to be very happy when I bring in the new clientele, but he's going to wonder about the child. Does he work on the island? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I love Emmanuel. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> she just like kneels down and puts her hands on his shoulders. Ay, preciosura de mamá. No. Whatever you said just now. You guys collect yourselves. You catch your breath and stand, and you head, I presume, down the remaining hallway within this nexus in the structure. As you continue to move, you eventually uh, come into a large circular chamber. As you walk into it, it's actually a little bit cooler than the rest of the rooms have been. It's a very comfortable temperature. Uh, coming into it, there is... <laughs> as you come into it, you see that the this large round room, it's about it's like a 30-foot radius uh, around to it, has a single large dais in the middle of it, and floating above it, there's a sphere that looks to be just like this sphere of demonic energy shimmering like the surface of the water that is floating in the air. It's not that big. It's like five feet heck in diameter. But floating in the middle of it, just calmly, the crimson medallion hangs in it, slowly spinning around. Okay. Walking towards it. Yeah, I'm gonna follow Gina. As you walk towards it, nothing seems to happen in the room. You notice there are like metallic strips that extend out from the dais to the various sections of the room. Eight of them in fact, or sorry, six of them that move out to the corners of the room behind which there are large glass panels that are in front of these alcoves that are equidistantly uh, spread around the room. Uh, inside of each one, there appears to be a tiny totem, like a small statue sitting inside each one that is currently protected behind a, uh, a pane of glass each. If you were to take a minute to look around at them, uh, one is a statue of a godlike weapon smith, this imposing demonic figure raising up a hammer as if they're going to uh, strike it down on an anvil. Uh, one is a collection of what you, the players, would recognize to be red orbs, with all with little faces on them swarming together in a crowd. Another one is this complex-looking cog that is, has all sorts of uh, interesting inscriptions and symbols on it. One is a just an ornate hammer, like a properly sized hammer. One is a recreation of a demon skull. It looks goat-like in appearance. Uh, one is a miniature bastard sword that has the characteristic appearance of a large sword, but it's about half the size that it should be. And you said these statuettes are, like, sealed? Yes. Like the... Each one is behind a large pane of glass that goes from the ground up to the ceiling, and they're each in, like, an alcove. I have no idea what to make of any of that. It seems as if, potentially, something will happen once we he like motions to the medallion. <clears throat> Just like what happened last time. Each of these rooms seem to have wanted us to touch something first. Yeah. If I, like, touch the ball of water, does anything happen? Whenever you go over to touch it, you put your hand in it, you find there's a... It, it has the appearance of shimmering water, but when you touch it, it appears to be made of energy. When you, your fingers go through it, there's a tingling sensation, like a... Almost like a little static charge. But beyond that, you can your hand can just move cleanly through it with seemingly no repercussions. You do notice that as soon as you put your hand in, like, the weight of your hand doesn't seem there anymore. Like, everything inside the ball is weightless. I'll wrap my hand around the medallion. When you reach in, you grab the medallion, nothing immediately happens. We cool with this? I just I pull it out of the water. Sword. As soon as you take the medallion out of the orb floating in the middle of the room, as soon as it breaks connection with it, a large metal door slams down over the exit, and all cool. of the glass panels shift and move up into the ceiling, giving access to the six totems around the room. You hear the sound of crunching, and all of the gears and cogs and pulleys under the floor that you can barely see through it, all grind to a halt with a brief commotion that causes the room to shudder very briefly as they come to a close and then everything just goes quiet. The ball remains in the room, light dims slightly as the totems seem illuminated and a small, very uh, faint spotlight seems to be coming down over the still existing ball of energy in the middle of the room. But beyond that, no enemies appear, no traps seem to spring. Maybe we put one of these little statue things in the in the ball whenever you pull the medallion out just looking at it briefly the surface of the medallion seems to depict uh, in the middle there's a forge and then surrounding it there are three circles on the medallion and with each one ore and cloth is like swarming around the circles seemingly entering it breaking apart into components and re-entering these three circles I'm thinking that statue over there he points to the one of the godlike weaponsmith Again, just by moving one over, this depicts some sort of creation. Well, there's a smith and hammer over that way, and there's a weapon over there. I'm gonna go grab the godlike weaponsmith, the hammer, and the sword. 
Yeah, you go, you grab them as you do, you notice that the little podiums they sit upon, they repress slightly whenever you take it off. It's like Indiana Jones style, they they seem to raise up without the weight of the totems on them. But as you grab all three of them, nothing seems to happen, nothing untoward occurs. Just for shits and giggles, I'm gonna put the godlike statuette in the, uh, in the ball. Whenever you walk over to it and you take it, you put it inside of the rather large anti, uh, anti-gravity ball as you put it inside it you hear the sound of a cog under the floor very dramatically and suddenly shift and fall into place as something acknowledges that something has been done the ground and the room shake slightly for just a moment as this happens place the hammer inside um, okay, I do that. I put the hammer inside. Place it in, same thing happens. They start floating at, like, an even distance from each other, like, orbiting one another, never changing their rotation. Uh, and when you do, you hear again a more violent sound underneath you, as it seems like more gears and cogs shift and settle into place, with the heavy thuds of machinery locking into place, as you do. I guess now the sword. Hold on. In this, uh, depiction on the medallion, it, say, it seems that... We see a smith, a hammer, and some sort of swirling cloth or something. It doesn't seem like there is any sort of sword. I think we should replace that. Back where it was. It doesn't look like there's any cloth-like statuettes here. The only thing I can see moving around are these uh, orbs featuring these faces. I was thinking we could put that in instead. I'll try to take the red orb faces one. And if any, unless anybody stops me, I want to I wanna put it in. Wait, I want to put it in. I, I hand it to Emmanuel, of course. <laughs> Emmanuel takes it, takes it over to the ball and puts it in. It raises up the three totems. Uh, again, take like an equal distance from each other and orbit it as it does. The cogs in the room that are under the floor and the gears and the pulleys begin moving again. And then as they do, they seem to stop. The anti-gravity ball disappears for a second as the totems fall out and clatter to the ground in different directions. And then the ball reappears. And mm. anybody that has style points, lose one. If that, well, I don't I think that was what we wanted. I was, I suppose I was mistaken. Have we tried the god statue, the hammer, and the sword? That was my original idea. We didn't go that with that. That was the original idea. Okay. Let's go well, with let's that. Let's go with it. Might as well. Let's, I mean. let's I can do it. As you put them in, they float into the center. They start floating around each other at equal distances. They begin rotating slowly. The clockwork under the floor begins to move as it had done before. And then the anti-gravity field becomes entirely opaque, seems to become a solid ball of iron that floats in the middle of the room. The large metal grate that is in front of the door lifts, allowing you to leave. Hey! What did and, I say? I'm and, a fucking genius. <laughs> and all of you gain a style point. <laughs> so uh, where were we supposed to take these again? The, the, the Elevator. As you move forward and move back to the center, you come back to the, the four pillars, one of which already has a medallion placed in it as a button. The other three have indents, and you are free to do as you wish. Uh, Everything's a puzzle. Uh, that one there, that one there, and that one there. So when you move to it and you place the first one into it, the pillar itself lights up faintly. It's hard to even perceive, but it glows lightly in the dark. You also see um, part of the room a light flickers on, and you see a large statue materialize. What appears to be uh, a woman wearing an animal skin over her head, kneeling down, her arms twisted back up, holding a giant hourglass upon her shoulders, seems to just appear and materialize in front of you. As soon as it does, a soft radiant light begins flowing out from it. You get the sense looking at it, and it's hard to discern exactly how you come into this information, but just looking at it, you get the sense that it is there to help, that it has materialized because you have some need of it, uh, and that it is able to exchange your effort and your, the tribulations you've been through for certain goods that may aid you. Usually I lights e. have helped us. It's a shop. I'm gonna buy a vitals and 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 You guys and like, should each oh, have, you guys each have can, 543 red orbs. I will mm. take five of the small ones. You walk up to it, you see, you feel this red, you see this reddish glow as like go from your hand into it, and five vital stars appear in front of you. Uh, you guys would become aware of the fact that there's a limited number of items here. There are only three of those remaining to be bought. I want to buy three. a medium one. I'm doing what I normally do in DMC, which is splurge on green stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you bought one of those. Uh, he acquires one that has a, a brighter glow to it whenever he takes it. 
as well as one additional point. Uh, like uh, the star has one additional point beyond the the S one. <laughs> I will walk up to Niccolo. Um, so you you tend to get hurt a lot, and you you're a super super big help in the uh, in the fiery pits of hallway. Um, and I'll give him two of these small vital stars. Yeah. I want to give you a gift. Are you are you sure? Well, I'll have three more. So I'll have lots, and oh, yeah, yeah. I just thought you could probably use them. Thank you very Besides. much. I will, I will, I will keep them. Thank you. I'll give him a Be big smile. Hmm. Besides, what are you going to do if I can't save you again, Nicolo? Yeah, you can't give her lap dances if you're if you're dead. She just grabs Nicolo from behind, just hug from behind, just with a gremlin grin. I need to keep my... collecting favors from you, after all. My face, which was full of gratitude. Uh, to Fiona, uh, turns to a neutral expression of bitchitude as I am getting hugged from behind. See, now he's back to his grumpy self. This is how you know you're actually you actually have Nicolo. Thank you both. Hi, sin corazón. A hug Nico from behind. I like hugs. I'll go up and hug Manny. Oh, here I thought we were going to have a group hug. I'm in the can. I was joking. I'll drag Emmanuel over for a group hug. I have no choice. I'm and now we're strong. getting a. And now. Why are you all so strong? It's not every day that we're that that how many of us six random people are dragged into the pits of the frozen hells and come out relatively okay. I think we're best friends for life now. Well, get you over here, Gino. <laughs> I'm over here already. <laughs> I put my I put my arm out to like bring in. I'm on you. You're wearing me. That's how close I am. <laughs> I mean, Arden's my best friend, so I don't know if I can be best friends mm -hmm. with. All of you, but we can be friends. Mm -hmm. really, really I was told cool. that you can have more than one best friend. Mm, well, then I'll have one bestest. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's I don't know perfect. That the statue is sitting off of the elevator's actual platform, just so you know. It would not raise with the elevator. As you take the second <laughs> one, and you place the second medallion within another one of them, uh, you see the elevator kind of springs to life. It buckles slightly as if it comes loose, uh, loose from where it is. And you see, with two of them put into it, the one that previously the service worker had been contacting you through, you hear just a... Oh! Uh, hey! I don't know what you guys did out there, but... Something just got active. I think you got it working. I push the button. Hi. Uh, over. And I'll look at Manny and just, like, wink at him. We are putting the medallions <laughs> into the pillars. Over. We have one more to put in, and then I think we're going to get into the elevator. And that's kind over. of the plan. Was that going to take us out of here? Over. And I'll let go. Uh, the, from what I can tell, it's already on. Uh, over. Okay, so we can use the elevator and we need to get to the workshop, right? Over. Yeah. Over. <laughs> <laughs> then what's this third one for? I don't know. Over. You didn't say mm -hmm. over. I put the third one in the third slot. <laughs> As you walk up and you put the third medallion into the third slot, the room feels lighter for a moment, and you see where it was, the pillar that it's on cracks, and you see a faint blue glow escaping the cracks as Mercury pulls over the medallion and the goddess's face appears over it, same as it had before. Boop! We're shorty construction, but fuck yeah! It's the same thing we found before? I know, just... Yep, it's, it's just... the same as before. The spiderweb pattern of cracks appears on it that don't actually seem to cause any structural damage. A faint, pleasant blue glow escapes from them, then Mercury pulls at the center of the web over where the medallion is, and a feminine face appears glowing faintly blue with a very inviting look to it. Uh, Emmanuel already said boops. So. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh, did you touch it? Emmanuel, when you put your hands into it, you hear a voice in your head. For the right to true strength, simply defeat thy enemy. Those who stand proud will never see defeat. Within these trials, that which cannot be restored does not exist. And you feel that if you pressed your hand farther into it, it would activate it as it had before. Break some stuff. You can't use things again. All right, let's go. <laughs> Emmanuel pushes his hand farther into it, and as he does, instead of the room disappearing, everything seems to peel away. Everything vanishes in a blur, and you all feel the room spinning. And whenever you come to, you find that you are at the top. Uh, you're on a platform with a large, blurry, arcane circle underneath you in a faintly lit room with little specks of demonic energy floating through the air that appear to be... Uh, lighting it up around you. As before, your consumable items, like the vital stars, vanish 
not to be used, you are over here. As you see, whenever you enter, stairs descending down, the stairs go up about 10 feet total. So you are about 10 feet elevated, and the ones that go up on the other side are also about 10 feet elevated. At the center of the room that it looks down into, you see that uh, the floor is covered in grating, and there's this almost spinning texture surrounding a pillar at the center of the room. It doesn't look like it's a physical effect, just a weird distortion in space. Uh, and you see halfway embedded in that pillar, what looks like a statue that resembles a Vetris Angelo, the same sort that you fought whenever you first entered into the Talon. <clears throat> you feel like while you are with, on the platform you are on, you are safe, and you feel that as soon as you step off of it, you will be stepping into combat. Vetris Angelo moves forward. As soon as you do, I would like everybody to roll initiative as the light that is around you ceases, the blurring effect around the pillar ends, and the Vetris Angelo that is present Within the statue, the color returns to them. They cease being a statue, and they look up at you and burst forth from the pillar. As you step forward, the words of the puzzle ring out in your mind again. For the right to true st strength, simply defeat thy enemy. Those who stand proud will never see defeat. Fionula, you're up first. So, I'm going to pull out Magistrate. We're just going to start strong here, boys. Going to put my single point to use deliverance. I'm gonna flip it off my back and like kneel down and like fire it at him. That doesn't hit. Damn. You fire at it, I... it, it they, the Vetris Angelo brings out the sickle and strikes the thunderous bullet out of the air. That's really rude. I was trying to be super extra cool and you really ruined it. So I hope you feel really bad. You guys see movement from up above as you see walking out towards the edge. A second Vetris Angelo looking down uh, from a raised platform on the side. Gino! Hi. So, it can't actually attack you from here, but it takes out the grappling sickle that it has and it hurls it out towards you. Uh, it is going to... It makes... It's only... Oh my god! It got... Cool. So, <laughs> swings it towards you, strikes you, you take 10 damage as it maxes its damage. <laughs> Uh, as it hits you and rakes across your armor, almost pulling your pauldron off of you, which for you is similar to having an arm pulled out of its socket. Pull me closer. Uh, it will- <laughs> it drags you down the stairs towards it, uh, and you fall prone. You got a hunter's mark? Okay. And I'm gonna shoot this boy, because he just got shot at and didn't get hurt, so now I'm gonna shoot at him while he was being shot at to hurt him. I see. Uh -huh. Yeah. You solved the puzzle. I will, as it hits him, part of the bullet seems to get stopped by this like magnetic field that's around him that wasn't present on the ones that were outside. It does hit him, it is just slowed down before it makes impact. A third one begins to act. This one rushes out and is going to leap down uh, as it slams into the ground and it rushes towards Gino. Uh, it is going to come in, and it's going to go for its full round of attacks. It's going to make two demon straight sword attacks on you. First, it goes for that one. Blocked by your armor. Goes in for the attack, and it does not manage to find any purchase. Goes for a second one. That one hits. Mm. Strikes you, dealing minimum damage, dealing three. After which, it's going to look up at the rest of the group, and it's going to hurl the chain up at Emmanuel. It'll have disadvantage because of proximity, but it still hits. <laughs> It's you, deals three damage, and I need you to make a strength save. Are you putting anything into it? I don't have anything to put into it. Cool. You fail. <laughs> you are also pulled ten feet down the stairs. As everyone that's up there, the only thing you've gotten to see is sickles latching onto people and pulling them out of the room. Which is the one that grabbed the child? <laughs> the one that just fled back behind the wall. I like this child, so... <laughs> <laughs> My, 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 I, I'm not a mother, but something kicks in with this child. <laughs> I want to protect it. But it went over there like a bitch, so we're going to be bitch. stupid. I'm putting my, I'm putting this gun to fucking use today. We're going to shoot it. Bang, bang. That's a hit. That's a good hit. You fire, nice. same thing as before. It seems to take on a, a strong, proud posture into the attack as it hits it. You see some of its armor does chunk off and is damaged, but not as much as you'd like it to. For our last thing, we're gonna use our Bardic Inspiration. We are going to give it to Gino. I'm gonna stand up. Get knocked down, but I get up again. 
Yeah. He knows stronger than Twig Blight 3. Let's go! I stand up and I do what they've been doing this whole time. I stand up firm posture higher on the stairs than him and I swing my sword at him. <laughs> go Ventures. I have the high ground. <laughs> Don't try it! Hiya. You strike it, dealing 13 damage reduced down to 6, as even as you hit it, taking a proud posture of your own didn't seem to have any major effect. It seems to stand resolute when you hit it, its feet just firmly plant into the ground, and the blade cuts into it, but it doesn't react super strongly. Slice! Cut into it, dealing another 6 damage to it. Arden. Alright. When you're living on your own, you gotta Arden. And then I'll, uh, fucking point my glaive over to that fuck over there. Uh, I'm gonna use my bonus action to, uh, light my glaive of flame. Like, uh, like before, just rake my, uh, rake my hand against, like, the shark skin, like, bracer. You coat the blade with blood, and as you do, as you draw your hand across it and leave a streak of blood, the blood ignites into flames that coat the edge of the glaive. All right, here you go. And I'm gonna... Attempt to beat him up. Do it. Attempt to beat him up. I'm guessing that doesn't hit. That doesn't hit, I'm afraid. I'm gonna. S I'm gonna use my. I can't. So I use my bonus action. No. Ah! <laughs> nice. <laughs> Next time. Uh, it's Next my time. Turn, then. <laughs> that one's going to go. <laughs> it is going to step forward, and it is going to only use a chain lash, and it is going to lash out at Gino, and it misses. Hey. Oh. Chain flies over your head, doesn't hit. It went what? It went one. It's then going to go boop. Three. Cry. Four. And it's going to rush up at Arden. It is going to enter your range. And we know how that goes. Yeah. That's a hit. That's good. Die. So it rushes Fuck. up towards you. You strike it. Uh, it rushes up towards you. It gets hit on the way. Then it's going to go for a slam and a straight sword attack on you as it gets close to you. Eh. Brings up its fist, tries to strike it into you, but you manage to duck to the side, uh, like spinning, like oh. striking your glaive into the ground and moving to the side, kind of dancing around it, and then goes for a straight sword attack on you. Huh. All right, all right. That hits. Fuck! Cuts into you, dealing five damage as it strikes up towards you. Ah! Nicolo. Shite! So I was gonna attack. Uh, I'm gonna disengage. Oh, you were prone, weren't you? Oh, yes. I have to stand up so I can only get. <laughs> 5, 10, 15. Uh, I will go there then. That will, so I'll still pop there. I just can't go further. Uh, since I can't go further, I could dash. Ooh, ooh, danger. Yes, I'm going to dash. So Vetris 1 is going to attack you on your way by. Yes. We'll resolve that first. As you go by, the blade swings in, aiming at the top of your head. And... Oh, yeah! It strikes, you manage to move and only get grazed by it, but it leaves a cut along the side of your temple, dealing six damage to you as you rush up and get over to there. Ah, uh, and that's me for now. Number one's going to go. He's going to pursue. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Rushes up towards you, and it is going to strafe around you somewhat. It's going to get to here. Slam attack as it tries to strike you. It hits. Brings down his fist, punching you, dealing four damage, and then brings its straight sword up at you, strikes, hits. Now yeah, stop it. <laughs> strikes you. Ow, fuck! Dealing <laughs> six. <laughs> then it's gonna go for a chain lash. It's gonna have disadvantage because of the range. And it drops a 20. <laughs> and it still hits. Yep. You take f exactly your health and damage as it pulls you down to the ground. Well, Marile. Get up, you magnificent bitch. <laughs> did, did I just see? This fucking child. Technically, you probably wouldn't be able because you were on the ground because you were knocked prone. No, I'm on, I'm on the ground. You like, you would have heard, heard you would have seen it chase him up some stairs and then heard the sounds of chopping and a slam. That's just that eyes widen. I need to get there, but these fucks <laughs> need to stop. <laughs> We're uh, gonna earth tremor. You stand? All right. Everyone else isn't, though. One of the Vetresses succeeds, everyone else fails. You all take six damage, uh, except the Angelo, which, as it, the tremor hits, as soon as it hits the ground, it becomes susceptible. It seems to take full proper damage. Uh, go ahead and click the prone effect to also apply that to those three. You gotta knock them over. So yeah, they are all, uh, they're all knocked down, except for the one in front of you, Vetris Angelo 2 managed to resist that. Make sure you tick off the spell slot. 
Alrighty then, we're gonna fucking, we're gonna heal that child so that he can die again. Cause I don't know, I like this one. <laughs> I like this child. <laughs> you do that, you stand, as you stand, you put your hand on the ground. Uh, and you just push your palm into it lightly. As you do, the area around you shakes. Uh, Gino and Arden, you both unfortunately fall to the ground as the tremor causes damage to you as well. But the Vetris hits the ground, and when it does, you see it actually seems to, like, retch back in pain as it hits the ground, as if it's... as if just contact with the ground in this way is uncomfortable for it. The other one maintains its posture, grabs onto the wall, and stays up straight. And then Marile, what uh, what kind of word are you using? What is the verbal component of your healing word? As soon as she saw the child run up and then heard slashing and chopping, she would have called out to the child before doing that. <laughs> yeah, just calls out his name. That's it. I get up. I'll get on the other side of him. Uh, Glaive hits the I'm ground. You vault over to the other side of him and land. All right. I'm going to attack the prone one here. Gotcha. Die. That hits. Nice. Die. So you hit him, and not only do you hit him, but his armor seems brittle while he's on the ground. You deal double damage to him. Oh. You deal 16. Uh, can I add another uh, D4? Of fire? Uh, yeah, sure. Roll it. He'll take another eight. Oh, it takes another eight. Ooh. Yeah, he's now heavy as you hit him. Uh, the armor seems to start burning away as if it were flammable. And that's me. Hubby, <laughs> I'm going to run down here. And I'm going to pull out my katana, and I'm going to follow my friend's example, and I'm going to try to just, like, stab down into this thing. Gotcha. That is a hit. Hello, sir! Uh, as you hit it, uh, you destroy it. I, the thing that was on it made it resist death, but you strike it, that one cracks, it explodes outwards, and the various fragments of it begin disappearing into just different flakes of magical and demonic energy. Maybe I'm better with my swords. Oh well, nice work! I think that since these three have this guy, I'm going to go over to Angelo 1. So. Uh, I'll, I'll get here then with my 15, and I'm just going to start attacking. I mean, I'm, I'm, if, if anything, I'm going to get really low damage, or I'm going to push him over, so let's just try to push him over. I don't care. All right, so go ahead and roll me athletics as you rush up beside him and get uh, over beside Fionula, and then just football tackle him, trying to knock him to the ground. <laughs> let's go! That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> roll the 1. <laughs> Even if he got a one, he'd beat him. <laughs> As you rush up, you try to football tackle him. It puts its arms up and just catches you and shoves you back. Emmanuel? This is why I was hoping someone else would knock him over, you see. Stand up. I'm gonna do what I do best. I'm gonna point my ring at this angel. Oh, oh my no! god! <laughs> no! Do it! There's something on your face. It's pain! <laughs> the cat <laughs> appears along your hat, runs in a circle around it, and as you activate the magic, lunges to the Angelo. Roll for the... So you're targeting the Angelo in front of you. I'm targeting the Angelo. Roll me. <laughs> roll me. There's die. a 10% chance I cast fireball and drop. We'll see. And kill the party. Do it. <laughs> you <had> words! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. You boy, <laughs> you guys just see the form of the Vetris Angelo creaking and growing mass. <laughs> what did you do? Uh, cancel it, undo. <laughs> undo, undo. Oh no. So you, you cast it as the Vetris Angelo grows to massive proportions. It's huge now! Woo! He slits him well, it's large, well. but I mean, it's comparatively huge. Uh, Actually, he is on a weird space. I'm gonna go ahead and have him roll an, a dexterity over? check. Which he oh, gets a seven. Off. He is going to fall backwards. Is he gonna fall the... prone? Uh, he's going to take 1d, he's going to take five damage, which is gonna be redu uh, reduced down to two. Run, Emmanuel, run! <laughs> <laughs> what do you do, Emmanuel? I go behind the pillar. <laughs> <laughs> there is just the cat is now sitting on top of the Vetris Angelo, just on its head, looking around, scared because it's terribly high, and occasionally just mewing with a reverberating ghostly mew. <laughs> Why did I want to be here again? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna go for an attack on Arden, which hits. 
Ow. Doesn't he also get a, a d4 to that. his attack roll now? Yeah. Oh, man. As it strikes. It hits you, dealing 11 damage as it brings up one of its <laughs> colossal hands and slams it into you. It's then going to go for a giant demon straight sword attack on Niccolo, which Help. hits. It's going to bring down a giant demon straight <laughs> sword on Niccolo, and you take 7 damage. It's not bad. It is then going to chain lash at Marile. As a giant sickle, half the size of Marile, flies towards them. And not once! Yeah! Hooray! The su- it's too big to throw! His <laughs> arm <laughs> catches on the ceiling as the sickle digs into some wiring on the ceiling. It gets caught on it, and it tries to pull it down to throw it, and it can't manage to. Should I even ask where the child is? <laughs> child's fine! Yeah, child's fine? What about We're every- We're gonna die! <laughs> <laughs> Man. What the fuck happened? Oh, Ring of Wonder. <laughs> you were overdue to screw over the party. <laughs> it's going to go for a slam attack against Arden. <sighs> yep, bye guys. Oh, fuck. Uh, Alright, uh, I'll just- Swing cool. towards you. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Did oh you, yeah, cause demon you, things. Did you forget what you are? Oh yeah. But no, it hits you, it strikes you, and you feel ribs crack, and you grimace, and pull yourself back from it. You are all ah, right. Fuck. It is then going to go for a demon straight sword attack on Niccolo. Oh. It misses. Yeah. It's <laughs> then going to go for a chain lash on Fionula. Bring it, bitch. It does. It drops a 20. It misses. Thank you. It reels back, strikes Arden, brings up the other sword, turns, strikes against Niccolo, brings the hand around, whips the chain over at Fionula. It is actively fighting. It is, for the group, a chaotic flurry of dodging blows and weaving around this thing as it is just a torrent of attacks coming at you. Yeah, that, dodging. Like, I mean, you tried. <laughs> I'm gonna try to push this big fucker over. <laughs> And I'm gonna use my bardic inspiration. <laughs> you just like behind it and ignore and you just on the stairs just does a stretch. <laughs> you never know. You just back up, you jump towards it trying to slam into it. Go ahead and roll me athletics. <laughs> so you got a 17. So you jump towards it. It got a nat 20. It has uh, advantage. It you reaches. It has advantage. Cause it's oh, enlarged. Cause it's fucking I Yo. thought they just had a plus four on that. I didn't think they had Nope, a they... This one has advantage because of me. <laughs> you <laughs> jump at it, hit it in the back, and there's just a red sounding DING as you just fly back and hit uh, back on the stairs. I'm going to try and knock the little one over with my first attack. Okay. 16. All right, I'm going to go ahead and roll for the tiny boy. He <laughs> got a 19. They only, have, they only have a plus two. They're not even... Ugh. With my bonus action Polar Master attack, can I also make that a shove attack? You can replace an attack. I'm gonna fucking knock him over. Shove again? That's pretty good. Okay, here he goes. He fails. You push him over, he hits the ground and starts writhing in pain the moment he hits the ground. Oakley doakley. Talk file him. Damn fucking right, I'm going to stab him with my katana. And then lay on the floor, you gotta stab him. Come on. <laughs> That doesn't... Kicking me! Above a ten, Fiona! <laughs> <laughs> I'm above a ten on a ten! Why can't you roll above a ten, Hayden? You're out of inspiration? If you get a six, no. it will hit. It would be a shame to waste it! <laughs> No, doesn't no. <laughs> It was a shame to waste it now, but you know what? <laughs> if you want, if you have the points, where is it? Your sword thing. Yeah, yeah, you have uh, yes. overwhelming advance, okay. which I will remind you, the bardic inspiration will apply to whatever the result oh. of that is too. You right. So I'm just gonna. So don't roll the attack you. again. Just roll a d20 because it yeah. the reroll doesn't have advantage. Ten plus your modifier, which is five plus the four, that hits. You would that right. is what come a hit. There you go. Thanks. You sword sainted. I sword sainted. Thank you. Roll damage against him. <laughs> I'm gonna. Hey, good damage. It is destroy. Uh, it is. Wait, hold on. Uh, you hit it. You destroy it. Emmanuel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cut off your fucking <laughs> finger that has that goddamn thing on it. <laughs> the 2013 hit Pacific Rim. What? Exactly like that. 
Also, Despacito keeps falling. I'm going to start running and jump off the side. And while I'm in the air, I'm going to cast Inflict Wounds on it. Okay. Uh, you guys have made this worse by your own hand. I'm not- I don't even feel respons- I don't even feel responsible anymore. <laughs> roll- roll your- your- That just- It doesn't hit. You collide with the side of the pillar. You're gonna take 1d6 falling damage, my dude. Uh. <laughs> Don't fucking Doesn't die from that. Like, and you slow motion. Five. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you're not dead. I use the rest of my movement to stand up. <laughs> His turn. <laughs> He's gonna go for a slam attack on Gino. He hits. He spins around, punches you while you're down. You take eleven damage. Demon straight down. Demon straight sword attack comes around to Niccolo. Hits. Max damage. Niccolo's does. unconscious. Well, Yay. thanks for watching DMC, guys. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed he's the streams and the upcoming no. posters. We'll see then you next time for the next campaign. Then he's going to chain lash Emmanuel. Uh, and no! miss. Good. You bitch. <laughs> you giant bitch. <laughs> My leg. You know what? We might all die. It's time to be stupid. Can I run and devil's kiss it? Yes, that's stupid. You but can the do it. Thing... The thing is, in your last fight with them, you were made aware that it is immune to psychic damage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. However, if, however, <laughs> however, if it was not a construct, that would be a wise thing to do. Do you want me to give you a dumb idea? Yeah, sure, I'll take it. <laughs> and everyone's gonna be like, that's stupid. You could move around it, and you could rush towards it, and in place of your attack, you could try to knock it over. And then if you <laughs> succeed, you will be the coolest person in the party for a while. <laughs> you know what? Let's let's do it. <laughs> that, we're just all gonna try shoving it over. That's you what rush towards it. Mighty Leg runs up the stairs, leaps <sighs> off of it, spins and tries to kick it in the air. I need you to roll an athletics check. Can I put yeah, style Marty points Lake. in this? You can put style points in it if you want. You can put any amount. You can put all three if you want. Do it! All right. Yeah, we'll do it. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh. Does she get two more back? <laughs> yeah, you get you get two more style points back. She runs, she gets to the side of the stairs, leaps <laughs> off, bounds off the wall, and strikes into it, just spinning and kicking into the creature. I have to roll its... Can it even beat that? Uh, no. <laughs> it got a 21, but you oh strike god, it. Buddy. As you do, your weight collides with it, you press against it, and then jump off of it, pushing it farther as you leap backwards off of it back onto the stairs. No, no, no. No, no. It's massive form. <laughs> it's massive form crashes down as it hits the ground with a thunderous sh uh, shudder of the earth under it. Oh my we lord. All, like, I was- We uh, all just stay- I'm so happy. Everyone else looks at it, it silently. silently. Yeah. It's like, Oh, the strongest I'm person. So happy this Everybody looks at it as the dust settles, as everyone's head just turns towards you in silence. <laughs> I'm going to fucking jump on top of it and stab my greatsword into it. Go for it. Fuck it up. That's a hit. Fuck it. You okay? Not only, well, not only do you deal uh, 28 damage, but it loses concentration and it loses in large. <laughs> <laughs> As you hit it, it starts shrinking, contorting painfully back down to its normal size. You are the strongest person I have ever met. <laughs> Looks to my leg. Where is the child? Right He's right in front of you. As the sh as its massive form shrinks down, you can now see past it to where the kid's just on the ground, kind of like. Aah. All right. It's fuck time up. to fuck a bitch up. <laughs> Assuming I can hit it, I'm gonna use blood curse of the marked. Now I just gotta fucking hit it. Uh, hi oh. yeah, that hit. Fucking die! You rush towards it, leap on top of it, that kills it. You strike into it as your blade goes down into it. A, how do you want to do this? Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, I just see it shrink down <laughs> as it loses concentration. Ah, and I leap on top of it and just 
stab into the ground, beheading it. <laughs> as you drag it, as, as you it bursts into flames. Strike down into it as its form shrinks. It just explodes outwards. Flame erupt around the area. Everybody loses sight of uh, what's going on in front of you for a second. And whenever you manage to refocus on what's happening, the entire room is gone. Uh, there's nothing underneath his weapon as he, like, takes it back up out of the ground with a sh as the blade comes out of the ground as the elevator room reasserts itself. <laughs> as things come back into uh, reality, as the trial fades away, you see the spiderweb pattern of cracks begin to recede back in towards the mercury face, which disappears, and at the center of the elevator, a effectively a, a podium made of the same material appears again with a blue orb floating above it, but also one vital star, one devil star, and two vital stars also floating around it. Gonna jump behind Arden, just hug him around the waist. That was so cool! Oh god, I hurt so bad. <laughs> oh, good shit, sorry. Oh. <laughs> He's like lightly back so, away and just like. As you guys yeah. exit from there, you oh, will all immediately, due to the effects of it, benefit from a long rest. Oh, Hell thank yeah. god. And the item. I run up and I left the manual on a hug. <laughs> uh, all right, I feel better. Hug me! <laughs> come back. <laughs> come back and hug him. You was so good. Oh, oh, you did so good yourself. Thanks. Uh, Except for at some points where it felt like you just couldn't roll above a 10. I know! <laughs> <laughs> you were rolling dice! I couldn't roll above a 10! Yeah. Also, who wants to touch the blue glowy thing? I'm just like holding on to your waist. I mean, I touched it last time. Anyone else want to do it or you want to leave it up to me? <laughs> Emmanuel, you grab the blue orb. Do you want to, uh, do you want to use it? Hell uh, yeah. All right, so you know the deal. So first of all, the maximum hit point increase. Roll me 1d4 plus two. So everybody okay. is going to gain an additional one, two, three, four. That's you. Okay, and now, Emmanuel, I need you to, oh, for the four. hit point increase that lasts <laughs> until the next time you complete a long rest, roll me 1d10 plus two. And sha! Oh. Well, oh. you win some, you lose some. All right, you guys benefit from an extra three maximum hit points until the next time you take a long rest. And with that, the blue orb, the light from it, it shines out, and you are all empowered by it. It then disappears. <laughs> At this point, there's a little bit left in what we would call mission two. All right, I think uh, we're going to end the YouTube side. We'll be back again in two weeks. Y'all know the deal. Heckin'. Oh, I'm really happy to because on it. Uh, spoiler, once we get past this little bit, game's going to open way up. You guys will have lots more stuff to do. But yeah, we'll see you around. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.